the significant signs of diabolical deception in the acts of the SSPX heretics and why it is then they are excommunicated, this extremely important publication of the true apostolic Holy See, in its infallible doctrine, and in fact public condemnation of such horrendous heretics as these SSPX and similar heretical frauds and impostors to the genuine holy Catholic priesthood, this publication declares the truth about their scandalous heretical and even sacrilegious actions which these ipso facto excommunicated SSPX heretics do not blush about, as such servants of the devil are visibly content that such by them committed sacrilegious evils and scandals are the more propagated and spread abroad, to the scandal of the unwitting souls of the genuine Catholic faithful, the new catechumen and converts from heresy, including those freed by the mercy of God from the apostasy of the non-Catholic neo-Protestant pro-communist novice ordo sect and brought to the divine light of the truth of the genuine Catholic religion, by the infinite mercy and supernatural grace of God, this non-existent false SSPX quote order unquote and those heretics who emanated from it, and who are declared excommunicated from the unity of the true Roman Catholic Church, their heretical and sacrilegious evils are heretofore condemned to the fullest extent of the Catholic Church magisterial authority by this true holy apostolic see. The altar stone of the previous church, which was on campus, in the middle of the uh, campus of the Jesuits, belonged to the church in which over 100, no, 1,000 Jesuits were ordained priests. And unfortunately, the church burned in Shanwright 79. Now we are building a new church, which is the replacement of the former one. But uh, we wanted to show continuity. And so we brought what was the most precious of the, I may say, leftover. And we brought it here to, to show that, we, yes, this work it continues. And uh, bigger than the former one, but it is, it is continuity. I think it's important to have this, this concept. The church is over time, and here you have it. It continues. I see, and this is the, old the mensa of yeah. the old. We, we're going to put you to work today, Your Excellency. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> Saint Joseph, but uh, right. the patron of the workers, that's not today, that's uh, <laughs> yeah, the... heard of me. All right. Yeah, the, the photo does not render it, I don't know. It doesn't do it justice. No, I've, I've, It's hard to get a sense yeah. of the scale. Of yes, the that precisely that. I say, I, difficult to have the right idea. It's so large. The feeling of being, yes, satisfied to see something, I don't say a dream, but almost a dream come real. It was not a dream, it was a, a project, and we knew it, it would be, it would take a long time to get it, because of its importance, because of its size. Um, right now, it's one of the most exciting time, because you really see it grow, so to say, and uh, at, at speed, given the size of this building, to see it coming out of the earth, is, uh, yeah, it's a wonderful feeling of, Thankfulness to today is the feast of Saint Joseph. Thank Saint Joseph to take care of of this project. He's he's our general bursar. <laughs> the ipso facto excommunicated SSPX heretics and their evidently purposely broken but previously truly validly consecrated altar mensa from the old Jesuit built church in Saint Mary's, Kansas, USA which burned down and thus was desecrated in 1979 AD after these notorious heretics obtained it from the novice ordo sect. A great sinister evil mystery surrounds the whole situation, 
how this is even possible that an altar mensa becomes thoroughly broken into two pieces and thus the most important part of the original altar becomes desecrated and can no longer be used for the mass, and why do they bury such a desecrated altar mensa in the place of the foundation of the new altar? On this picture is visible the break in the evident two-piece broken altar mensa from the old St. Mary's Jesuit Church, built in 1800s by the Society of Jesus Priests, Father Pierre de Smet etc., and the question remains to be answered, how did it break, when the mensa is always secure on top of the altar, so it had to be done intentionally to desecrate it on purpose, by whom? Novice Ordo Sect, SSPX Heretics. This diabolical evil is truly sinister and apparent. This is from uh, the same video, and this part is interesting that they didn't record it, how they were putting it in. So, on the right hand side, you can see this, the second piece visible. I guess that's because they don't, didn't want people to see it, but since they put it up there, that altar mansa, which is original from the original church, so it's truly consecrated, it's broken in two pieces. You can see the, the one piece on the right hand side in a circle. So, and then it says on that, uh, we will read it. It says, non-Catholics and laymen are not permitted to handle in any way whatsoever consecrated items of the Roman Catholic Church, including parts of the altar and so on. This is another point of serious heretical failure of these SSPX heretics, even though the mensa is evidently desecrated as it is, as it is, uh, because it's broken in two, it's no longer usable for, for, the, for the altar. It is the SSPX permission to handle such an important item by those who are not permitted to do so, because it's consecrated to God. They cannot have these uh, these on the orange uh, uh, overalls. They, uh, I mean, orange uh, jackets. They, these are construction workers. They are not permitted to do so. Uh, it has to be done by priests. And if it this this is even something that is not ordinarily done, we will speak about it in later later. Why is this so? What was so important to put this in there? Otherwise, than to mock God, really. Um, but it's more sinister than you think. So on the right hand side says the broken piece of the original altar mensa is visible below the SSPX video at this point shows only pictures by frames of this part of the event, not the actual video recording. Because they want people to overcome to, to, to overlook this because obviously these are servants of Satan, they hiding this. But that's not the place of first of all, um, why is it so? But then the next next picture shows that uh you can see that that's, that's, that's the original altar stone, altar mensa, because it's got engraving of those five crosses, because the altar represents that's proof of that, what the doctrine of the church, dogma of the church always was, that and is, that the altar re represents the cross of Calvary. So those, those are the five wounds, it's five crosses that represents, represent the cross, uh, the five wounds of our Lord when he was nailed to the cross and when he was uh, his side was opened by the spear of the Roman soldier. Uh, so this is original uh, uh, altar mensa and uh, not only that but it's got the it's got the hole for the for the relic which the SS, which the uh, Novus Ordo sect uh, they evidently removed it and they desecrated the church every single church that they they laid their hands on they used that no sort of mockery to desecrate it. So, because that's a non-Catholic ritual present in consecrated place, so God will no longer come because they're mocking him in that place, so that place is desecrated by, that's reflected in the canon law. Because godless, which it means heretical, idolatrous uh, service is, is pre permitted to exist in that, in that church. So that church is no longer consecrated. But this is, this is more sinister because you can see evidently those two pieces, because even by the length what they holding that piece, it's not long enough for the altar. Uh, that that other piece is already uh, in the ground over there on the right hand side. This is a horrifying uh, proof that these people don't have the clear uh, sight and understanding from God to what kind of evil this is, because that's not the place where it belongs and then they will erect that new altar on, on top of it and but the desecrated piece is underneath it which is another mockery and sacrilege in fact
It's serious. This is serious business that these heretics are involved in. Stay away as far as possible. So to um, understand it correctly, um, the the Novosol sect had perverted uh, these churches in order to, dis to destroy the, the faith and the sacraments, namely the Mass, because that's the devil, he hates the Mass, and he's trying to ruin everybody's chance of salvation. For the devil to have this kind of access to the churches through these collaborators of his, who are true enemies of the church, uh, that's uh, unique, but unfortunately that's the situation, because this, the devil robbed the church through these collaborators of his, of the church worldwide property including Vatican and uh, they desecrate everything make it made it totally unusable God will not come because that's a non-catholic ritual that takes place that desecrates the church and uh, God will not come and whomsoever attempts to do anything in there even say prayers commit sacrilege because they by attempting to do so a uh, consent to these changes is given because then they in in their mind even in their mind they validate it and uh, in a sense these abominations this is picture is very valuable on the right hand side there's uh there's a bad monsignor excommunicated heretic apostate monsignor giovanni battista mantini and never he was never the pope of the church he's in white cassock so that's a sacrilege on the left hand side are six protestant ministers who have who have uh, uh, helped to construct a Protestant heretical reenactment of the Last Supper, which is not a mass, and replaced the Tridentine mass with this horrible abomination? And Montini was the one who organized it to destroy the mass, virtually to desecrate the churches. So this desecrates the church because that's a, that's a truly uh, uh, something that is not what the church does. It's it's invalid, null, and dis it. Uh, and all the all the all the ceremon other ceremonies, including including the uh, uh, Catholic priesthood, and these people are just guilty of, of sacrilege, and so this is what it is. So Montini is burning in hell. They cannot absolve themselves. Could not. And his death signifies that how see how fast he was decaying when he died. That that's the case, and there's more to it uh, visible. So obviously these people are paying to God for their evils because this is truly Protestant uh, this Novus Ordo mockery of God is truly Protestant heretical idolatrous reenactment of the Last Supper but that's not the sacrifice the uh, holy sacrifice of the Mass which is reenactment unbloody reenactment of the sacrifice of the cross of Calvary the redemptive sacrifice of our Lord when he died on the cross that's what it is the holy sacrifice of the Mass offering as a propitiation for our sins the body and blood of our Lord as he died as he offered it in, uh, on Calvary, on the cross of Calvary. The SSPX has done so much evil to the church in this case because obviously that's not even heard of. The only custom there was if there was anything underneath the, the altar was in times past which the church uh, in the canon law now forbids to be done any longer for a good reason which we will explain uh, afterwards. But that was that the the church uh, in times past, and they were saying the mass on top of the the the, the graves, in the time at the time of the primitive church and time of the catacombs, uh, or in the churches like basilicas and so forth, where there were uh, in the in the uh, basement where there were uh, graves erected, like in the Saint Peter's. That's that's a known fact, but that's no longer done. Uh, plus the main altar uh, and so forth. Um, this is immaterial, but what the canon law reflects today is that um, the body cannot be underneath the, or the, the, the altar cannot be erected on top of a grave in that sense. Um, but this is different. This is, this is something that was never done to, to take old mensa from, from the church that the, the mensa is broken in pieces in two pieces which again how is that possible to happen but to take it and to bury it in front of, uh, underneath the uh, new altar what is the signification of this why is this there 
the Mensa is not some kind of relic or anything like that. It's your, well, that's that's a that's a symbolism of an, an, an ability to for them to show it to uh, to have the proper guidance from God to begin with. That's just uh, that illustrates their defects actually. Not only that they don't detect and they are not capable, are they doing it on purpose uh, because they are heretics, enemies of the church, but to seek to show this that this is something that they tolerate or they even construe it in their mind and, and put it in practice. Uh, and what is seen in that video Canon 1200, 1917 Code of Canon Law, which is the only valid code of canon law of the Roman Catholic Church the evident and clear language about this desecration of the altar in the church, and the bottom paragraph speaks about the desecration of the church not transferring to the altar and vice versa, but this principle of canon 1200 does not reflect on what has been routinely done by the novice ordo apostate sect, especially after the invalid quote promulgation unquote of their new and neo-protestant mockery of God by Montini, who was never valid pope of the Catholic Church, which evil is that the sect dared to perform their heretical abomination and not a mass on these altars, and thus, as a direct evidence of false worship, heresy and idolatry, this principle in such cases is declared by this apostolic see as no longer possible, as the altar itself is subjected to this abominable sacrilegious protestant heretical and idolatrous mockery of God and is thereby also desecrated as such. Church does then not feel a trust in construction outfit and he claims to be a bishop and uh, he's got the uh, construction hat that's another proof that he's a heretic because that's a, that's supposed to be property of the church the state has no authority to dictate how the clerics are dressed and moreover not uh, they cannot dictate any kind of rules to be uh, accepted or, or to be uh, for the church to be subordinated underneath uh, such rules uh, or laws or code of conduct or anything like that. But this is another illustration of what these people are capable of. They let themselves to be dictated by non-Catholic secular power. That's forbidden by, that's condemned by, by syllables of errors as reflected in the canon law, canon 1160. But the church property is church property and the state has no say what is done. And uh, so the authority is exercised, jurisdiction is exercised, by the ch exercised on church property by the, by the church, not by the state. State has no authority to do anything. If the state attempts to do anything or try to force these kind of laws upon a church, that's a sacrilege. And and attack on the liberty of the church. And that means denial of the rights of the church, which is a religious persecution. So, and these people, are, they are okay with it. They like, well, we would just do it and that's it. We don't even say a word about it. But that's to prove they're heretics. And now, so this, if this Pillay was truly bishop in position of the, uh, the effect of the of the of the consecration and he would not be able to be like this he would not permit himself to be dressed like this and uh, anybody who claims to be his priest like that uh, imposter there next to him who was shoveling the, the sand on top of that broken desecrated mensa uh, they, uh, that's just a remarkable proof who these people are so obviously they are vitandus, they are excommunicated. They are outside the church and those who go there, they will only incur the wrath of God and punishment from the church because they are equally guilty. You cannot set foot on, in these places, period. Those who attempt to help these, these evil doers to continue with monetary, monetary help, donations, and uh, uh, help in any kind of way or recognition and so forth, or to go to their places and to give donations on Sunday, uh, no, they are equally guilty, they are equally excommunicated. That's reflected on our recent uh, decree bull of excommunication that's in naming these people as vitandus, as vitandi. Excommunicati vitandi, which means the higher degree 
uh, of excommunication. They have to be named by name, which they are, including this play. I don't think we named uh, Radcliffe, uh, Rodlich, or whatever his name is. But that doesn't make any difference. He's still excommunicated because, because he's a heretic. And that will include those who attempt to go there and support these people. So um, the next um, excerpt is even more telling, it's more coming. It comes from the uh, another evil doer that is his uh, profound, we dealt with the subject of this so-called resistance in times past, but we need to enter on that subject because it's necessary just to warn people to keep it together because they are equally involved in this, uh, although they have some artificial disagreement which is set up as a, as a staged thing evidently so because they are uh, just present them presenting themselves they are spreading the evil again they are recognizing the non-catholic sect apostate pro communist sect Novus Ordo and so that's such a horrible crime against God denial of the authority of the church denial of the safeguards Denial, uh, denial on their part of the divine law which protects the power of the keys so it's even heresy anybody who dares to recognize it's not as a sect is heretic at that moment that's a false religion and they don't have any authority of the church in the church they don't have the membership in the church by recognizing them as such uh, that <coughs> uh, what is the case of this resistance on and SSPX and so forth and any other persons who name them and so forth, um, that's a, that's a Marxism heresy and sacrilege attack on the church as it is because they are, they are doing it willfully to deceive to show a lot of people into the hands of the devil whom they serve willfully. So these are the kind of poisons that one day spreading the church has dealt with them but to warn those who truly want to be Catholic about these evils is a very important part of our duty towards our Lord and that needs to be done and those who afterwards uh, still continue with such enemies of the church they have no excuse there's no excuse they are bound to study the faith bound to obey the church and the supreme head in our person and if they decide not to do so and they are outside the church, no chance of salvation. There is always some physical action, always some words, and when the two are put together with the intention of giving grace by the minister, the right minister, then supernatural grace passes. What is grace? Grace is a participation, a supernatural participation in the nature of God. In. It's a supernatural means it's above our natural forces. So why is this so important what this heretic Williamson was saying? He is they are actually heretics. This is not there's no no way around it. Vitandus. So priest cannot administer grace. He can by the grace of God, by the virtue of the sacrament, confer graces in the sacrament if he's truly priest. So what this Williamson said in the beginning of that excerpt, that's not true, that's not, you cannot give grace as a human being, God gives grace. So, and then the other thing which is even more striking that because that's that's a lack of under total understanding and guidance from the Holy Ghost in this heretic. Well, uh, participation of the divine nature by that means God Himself in the soul by the divine grace. Yes, not in but it's like the like the soul was participating in the divine nature no the word in what he uses that's a heresy because we cannot achieve this ourselves the only way this would be true but he says it in the in the way that is something that's a common thing the only way to be able to do that is again it has to come from god 
and it's called a very extraordinary state that is granted only to those uh, chosen souls that receive it from God as a gift, gratuitous gift, and that's called the union of the soul, divine union of the soul with God. The soul becomes divine by participation, but it's God doing it, and that's very rare. That, well, it did happen before the mystics; they had experiences of it. So, but that's not the case in ordinary situations of, of uh, especially now there are uh, there's no way that heretics can obtain any of this. Impossible. So he speaks to people who are heretics. He speaks to about situations that involve heretics or the sect. The uh, sectarians they are not Catholic, so there's no way to imply any of this. Period. So it's a heresy. So on that ground stands the rest of it because he's misleading obviously this is extraordinary falsehood and deception of publication we don't have two catholic faiths uh, it's only one catholic faith and that's catholic tradition so you see these are the kind of things that that are visible that these are actually enemies of god they don't have the guidance and so they are capable of producing these falsehoods. This is a horrifying heresy what he's implying. It may sound like a very small thing, it is not. It's really big, big problem because uh, yes, and St. Thomas Aquinas speaks about it in regards when he describes what grace is. So, but he speaks about, you can see it on the screen, he speaks about uh, that it's participation of the divine nature in the soul, yes, by virtue that the divine grace is given gratuitously by God to the soul to produce the works that God desires the soul to produce according to his will. And uh, so that's the grace is supernatural power from God, a spirit that emanates from God. Uh, for the purpose of achieving what God desires by supernatural means in a soul. It's a help from God, gratuitous gift. Uh, and yes, on, in this sense, yes, it is participation of the divine nature in the soul. Not what this Williamson is saying. The soul is not participating in the divine nature. That's impossible. Only in those cases where the, the God elevates that soul to uh, to uh, the divine union, but then it's still God doing it, so the soul, we cannot achieve any of this of our own. That's what it is. And he's implying this implicit heresy in that. No, there's no such thing as participation in the divine nature. It's participation of the divine nature in the soul. God is the one who does it. He's the mover of the uh, of the soul. And so the definition of this is it's totally opposed to theology and, and doctrine of the church. And, and no wonder, these are evil trees bearing evil fruits. The ipso facto excommunicated notorious heretic and impostor to the canonically valid Catholic Episcopate Richard Williamson, SSPX, MC Heretics, here in this 2015 AD video excerpt in his most scandalous denial of the infallible doctrine of the Catechism of the Council of Trent on the Sacraments, in support of his heretical recognition of the non-Catholic apostate neo-Protestant novice ordo pro-communist sect of the stolen Vatican, these SSPXMC heretics have also publicly admitted to have connections to the KGB-run communist Kremlin and the former KGB Lieutenant Putin. Stay away as far as possible or your bona fide may be already on file in the KGB GRU Department of Active Measures against the true Catholic Church for future persecution the communist worldwide tyranny in the upcoming time of the Antichrist. This is from Catechism of the Council of Trent um, on the sacraments and it says uh, the sacraments of the new law excel those of the old that there was no definite form known to us of administering those of the old and circum a circumstance which rendered them uncertain and obscure wills that means that was not revealed by God or kept for posterity because the perfection of the Catholic faith was to come. So it says then, wills in those of the new, the form is so definite that any, even 
a casual deviation from it renders the sacrament null, and it is therefore expressed in the clearest terms and such as excludes the possibility of doubt, which means that anything instituted that contradicts what the uh, approved and uh, true usage of the church is. Uh, in regards to the rights, sacred rights of the sacraments, which is protected by Council of Trent, Session 7, Canon 13, on sacraments in general, uh, so no pope has authority to change the sacraments, period. They are protected and he cannot contradict his predecessors, matters of faith and morals. So those are protected as far as back as the Council of Trent, and they were protected by what our Lord instituted. They are divinely instituted. The church is included because of the Protestant revolt. But because of this, uh, it is not possible to say what the following is, what this horrifying enemy of the church, choice scandalous heretic, excommunicated diabolical monster that is not even his, his so-called Episcopal consecration of 1988 is completely invalid because such Bishop of Havis, so-called consecrator and Bishop of the Castle they both used the 1962 invalid rite of Roncalli which Roncalli purposely changed to make it invalid, especially the imposition, the essential part of the Episcopal consecration, which means the imposition of hands, which is the matter of the sacrament. So this Williamson, uh, who caused so much scandal and so much evil, in this following excerpt is proving that he's completely heretic. He's just denying, directly, de explicitly, and ridiculing the person that brought it up, uh, denying the infallible doctrine on sacraments of the Catechism of Council of Trent, that means the Council of Trent, because in the decrees of the Council of Trent it speaks about the sacraments also. So uh, let's watch the following because it's essential to understand what these people are, these actually enemies of the church. Well, in the Council of Trent, it says Catechism of Council of Trent, they said if there's a slightest deviation in the form, they said, the sacrament is no. The Archbishop said they have faster priests than faster sacraments, which means that they are not Catholic. How could the Catholic, how could the Jehovah's Order Mass be legitimate when they have faster priests, not priests? The Jehovah's Order Mass is, is not legitimate because it is oriented towards man and towards the religion of man. It's not legitimate. But that doesn't mean to say, these are complications, it doesn't mean to say it's not valid. I'm standing at the foot of my garden, and there's an apple tree of the neighbor, and the branch of his tree comes over my garden. If I grab an apple that's over... The apple is yours because it's on the other side. I've just said, wait, let me finish one. <laughs> Hey, well, in your yard now, cut it off, the apple falls. The fact is that they have faster priests and faster Yeah, sure, sure, yeah, sure. Well, it, let, let me finish. And if, and if St. Paul II says in, in a letter to whoever was in Rome, he said, we have, new, we have new, new doctrines, he said, not fully understood yet, but we got to understand the like, for the traditionalists. Sacraments yeah. come under doctrine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let, let me come back to the apple. <laughs> <laughs> I might as well take that back to Adam and Eve then. <laughs> There's a connection. Uh, let's suppose the apple is, is on, the neighbor, on the neighbor's tree over the neighbor's garden. I grab it and I eat it. The eating is illicit because it's his apple, but it's valid because it fills my stomach. So we distinguish between valid and illicit. The apple eating, eaten, fills my stomach. It's valid, but it's illicit because I've stolen it off his tree. That's right. The new mass. So it's a sin. The new mass is capable of being valid, capable of being valid, but it's in any case it's illicit. Because it's against the will and um, the will of God. Well, then it goes back to the Council of Trent. It said, if, if you the slightest deviation makes the sacrament null, 
Well, what do you've got? You've got? I don't know, but I think okay. I think Trent has got you know a lot to say about. Trent it. has got a lot to say, but you but you've got the whole of Gothic theology, which which understands it, use it, which 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 gives precision to if, what you. If the guy was starving and he took the apple, fine and dandy. But if he just went and asked him to throw up his thumb as well before he had dinner, it's illicit. And I don't see it. Well, it, it's illicit. So anyway, it's just an example to show that something can still be valid even if it's illicit. And that the new mass is automatically illicit because it's not according to the will of God. It's a, it's a false replacement of the, of the mass which is the will of God. But even if it's illicit, it can still be valid. And it's not true to say that it is automatically invalid. It's just not true. It, it's not what the Trent, Trent says. Believe me, Wally. Oh, I read it. I'm sure you read it, but it, what, I don't know exactly how Trent puts it. Your phrasing is a little vague, but whatever, whatever Trent says is going to, is going to be what the, the theology says. Look, I'm, I, it would be so much easier if everything illicit was invalid and everything illicit was valid. White is white, black is black. That's not real life. It's not real life. Real life, real life is, is real life is demanding. It makes for some people. It makes us sometimes think. Thinking hurts, mommy. I don't want to have to think. I want nice black and white, white and black, clear and simple. Darling, you're going to have to sometimes deal with grey because not everything in life is either black or white. There are greys. There are mixtures of black and white. But we're not talking about black and white, we're talking about the kind of... No, no, well, we're, we're talking about the way people think. And what we're, the, but they should be thinking according to the way the Catholics are teaching. So if the Catechism of the Council comes from the Canon Decrees of the Council of the Council, that's where the doctor and all... Well, it, next time, bring your copy of the Council of the, 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 of the, Council, of the Council. We'll have a look at exactly what it says. Yes. Protestant reenactment of the Last Supper is heresy and idolatry. This has been condemned. And so this heretic, uh, Williamson, is deceiving. Obviously, it's visible. It doesn't, there's no need. He's excommunicated. So he's with Anders. He's outside the church. This is scandalous things. So just to confirm what was said before, what he's capable of producing, this is on top of it. No, the Novus Ordo does not have valid mass. It's not only invalid, it's an abomination. It's a renaking of the Last Supper, which yet that's Protestant. But that's not the sacrifice to God. It's not it's not the holy sacrifice of the mass. The pictures from that Mensa, what they buried, what Philip buried in, in, in St. Mary's Kansas, the broken one. It's got engraved five crosses, signifying five wounds of our Lord. And those wounds he obtained on a cross, not at the Last Supper. And that was always, that's a, that's a dogma of the church, that the, the, it's truly revealed uh, part of the review of faith, it's it's Saint Paul speaks about it. Show the death of the Lord until he come by, by uh, offering the 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 bread and wine and uh, consecrating and so forth into the body and blood of our Lord. You are, you will show the death of the Lord until he come. That's from First Corinthians. That's the confirmation. No, it's you you cannot say something that is not. You know, Renacment of the Last Supper is not holy sacrifice of the Mass. Never was and never will be. So those who attempt to believe this, they are heretics. Like this Williamson, like the rest of them. Of course the person who was challenging you, he was saying well, this, what the Catechism of the Council of Trent teaches. Yes, so this Williamson obviously does not admit it because they're teaching the falsehoods. He's teaching the, the, the fabricated thing which comes from, from the devil. And so obviously he's not capable of teaching the truth. Yes, but it's a heresy and idolatry because that's that that what they're using, they're facing the people and showing them the Last Supper. That's the defect of intention. They don't have valid priesthood because they perverted that. So 
Obviously, there's no there's no consecration. There's no mass. That's not mass. That's a reenactment of the Last Supper. That's what Luther had. That's what uh, Cranmer had. Well, he was condemning, or at least that's what they were saying. This is totally condemned by the Church. What this Novus Ordo sect has. So it's no, it's not valid at all. That's not a mass. It's an abomination. Desecrates the Church. Destroys the chance of salvation. Period. Whomsoever dares to call it Catholic becomes a devil and heretic and is outside the church. If so facto is communicated, we declare by our apostolic authority that this is the doctrine of the church that must be obeyed for people to be truly Catholic. This is, has been always the teaching of the church. It is reflecting the catechism of the Council of Trent and whomsoever dares to contradict this will inquire the word of God. This holy apostolic see in our personal vicar of Christ. Supreme Head of the Church, that is the only church there is, the Divine Institution Roman Catholic Church. We therefore declare and define that by apostolic, uh, apostolic authority that this Novus Ordo uh, ceremonies and uh, what this horrible sect has since put in place are totally condemned. They are not Catholic and they do not carry with them grace of God because they are abomination to God. Whomsoever dares to declare them uh, otherwise, uh, 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 consider them otherwise, then as we have just defined in our previous recordings also, uh, incurs by that very fact, ipso facto latai sententia, the grave penalty of excommunication from the Holy Catholic Church, and that means no chance of salvation because uh, to regard this horrifying false religion um, as what this religion has usurped the name of Catholic as horrifying abomination from God and he will repay it. And that's why these heretics are capable of producing these kind of falsehoods and so forth. As we have demon demonstrated there is there's a lot more a lot more data, a lot more publications, a lot more excerpts that could be used. But this suffices. First that, of, of, of course, and then it reflects also on those who are somewhat connected with them, at least by the association of formerly being part of the Society of Sympathistant, including also some of the Servacantis heretics and so forth. And this is so-called Society of Sympathistant and related uh, collaborators that are in the same camp. Uh, they, their evil fruits are visible. They're, they are evil trees bearing evil fruits. They don't serve our Lord. They serve the devil. They sentencing people to hell. They also support such people, such enemies of the church. Therefore, sin mortally. They give consent by their support to those heresies that these evildoers espouse and profess and disseminate. And therefore, these people are surely uh, outside the church, not no possibility of salvation. And uh, uh, they fall into the hands of the devil because uh, the devil is using such people for his poisonous uh, lies and and um, false doctrines that he's disseminating in order to poison everybody's soul and therefore the soul falls into the hands of the devil and the devil will not let that soul go and that's the case of these people that's why they don't even if this is recorded in front of their eyes or if they see it this doesn't resonate in front of uh, because God is not helping them uh, to recognize the truth or he's not helping them to recover because they uh, would not, they will not go all the way, they will not truly defend his church and therefore they are capable of going to such places as these heretics as SSPX and Society of the Pit and set of counties heretics and so forth this so called resistance without realizing thoroughly that that's one way to get to hell so beware of this, those who want to truly save their soul they are bound to help the church they are bound to study the page, they are bound to obtain the um, 
operation they are bound to go through the procedure what is prescribed by the church what is prescribed uh, what is the necessary part that needs to be admitted into the Roman Catholic Church in order to obtain the valid sacraments and so forth but that's subject I've also already dealt with in different publication what are the required uh, necessary, necessary steps that are to be taken by uh, those who are either part of the Novus Ordo sect or these hereticals heretical conventicles which are not part of the church uh, which is reflected on the on the law of the church what to do about those who are received from heresy and, and such like uh, people who are outside the church uh, which includes this Novus Ordo sect and, and those who join this, this heretical non-existent orders, none of them are approved by, by the um, uh, by the church with the exception of those who are formerly like the Dominicans and uh, Carmelites and so forth but that's they are outside as heretics because they profess heresy that should suffice today uh, as the summary conclusion on this of this uh, recording we have excommunicated all these people as published the wall of excommunication is available and some of them are truly named us by name to make sure that that's the higher degree there are two types of uh, excommunicate uh, souls uh, one of them is called Vitandi uh, Vitandus and the other is uh, Toleratus Tolerated and Vitandi that means the higher level of the um, excommunication which there's no possibility of contact with such person and um, so beware of this that's matter of canon law and church law disciplinary law that everybody is bound who wants to save his soul her soul uh, scout and there's no other way to save your soul it's only to be part of this true catholic church um, and practicing firmly and, and punctually the catholic faith which is nothing else but catholic tradition uh, you are bound to obey even the disciplinary laws and moreover uh, uh, the dogmas and so forth of the church but today the state of the, the affairs in this world are so bad and uh, widespread apostasy has reached such an end such a height that uh, very few will be helped by God that's our impression although he will have mercy on whom he will have mercy it's ultimately up to our Lord whom he will help and so far it doesn't look really good and that should suffice today it is the dogma divinely revealed outside the true Catholic Church without the practice of the Catholic faith which is nothing else but the Catholic tradition there's absolutely no salvation all heretics, infidels, apostates or enemies of the church like communists, socialists and so forth when they die in such a state of their soul they will burn in hell and do burn in hell do not be one of them, evil times are here.